What is up everyone? We are here in Elizabethtown, New York, getting ready for October, because it's it's almost here. <laughs> it's pretty much here, um, especially in New York. But we have, for Mike, the Fulton 200 this weekend and heading into Super Dirt Week. Gonna be a really quick turnaround, but I figured we'd pop in the shop and show you guys what the guys are up to, the changes that we have to make, um, and all the preparing that we have to do to get ready for Super Dirt Week at Oswego Speedway. So just imagine the rear deck driving down, driving on the racetrack, just and it just starts, it wants to rip right here because there's no support supporting the deck. So I designed this bracket to go underneath it and to hold that this deck support so when you're driving down the racetrack it doesn't nice. bounce back and forth which doesn't wear on the on the on the deck and these inner tins so that they don't want to rip we haven't proven that it's gonna help it, but it can't hurt it. You can see here where the deck is ripped around that area where Rich is gonna support. Mm -hmm. And you end up having to put a bunch of rivets and plates in there and stuff. And here Art made a brace. You can tell him Art. What's he doing, Art? Actually, it's a whole right corner we had to rebuild because uh, Somebody must have bumped into us at one time. No. But you know what's nice about doing body work? All the cars are females. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Art. Well, if you got me working doing body work. We'll see how I make out. So up to this point, you're probably wondering why are we doing so much work on the rear decks of the cars? Well, they are probably the most, uh, the weakest panel on a modified, they seem to crack all over the place and we have to replace them more often than any other panel. But we're also installing the quick fill. And uh, so to do that, it requires this panel that goes underneath the deck to hold it inside. And uh, it's, it's supposed to be covered up all around and we have to attach it to the fuel cell. It's gotta have this, this jug here where you put the quick fill jug in to feed it with the fuel and then here's this is the vent line for the catch can and so for uh super dirt week at oswego and uh eastern state we're going to need this to do our pit stops so this is what it would look like inside of the car uh as you see everyone filling up their tanks it's Quite a process actually to make these and to install them. Luckily, this one's already been on the car before, so it's, it's really more of a just an install. It's not as much fabrication, but you can see like these tubes and stuff have to be kind of perfectly shaped to fit and then uh, attach and fit inside the tin and everything. So, quite a lot of fabrication that Rich did on that. Oh. Two, year, two, three years ago, and we just continue to use it. So these teams that, have, that do this every year, it's certainly easier to, to install than the guys that are starting from scratch. Oh, <laughs> we're folding boxes. What are we doing, Lance? Uh, we're just getting the trailer ready and stocked for Fulton, and then uh, Super Dirt Week coming up next week. Just making sure we're going through everything, make sure we get enough stuff for oil changes, Stuff like that, all of our lubricants. I was trying to get stocked up for the week ahead. With, I think we had like six days in a row racing, so okay. can't wait. Oh boy. Here we have the, the dump can. We store them way up high in the pallet wagon because we only use them once a year. Uh, Pretty simple, but it's nice to have a stand. So Rich made this stand to hold them while it's full because it's heavy. And it's, when the guys get ready to, to use it, you want it filled up and bled and ready to use. So it sits there full of fuel on the stand uh, until I decide to come down pit road. And then here is what 
a really messed up, messy uh, harness looks like. <laughs> but you can see there's a lot of wire stuff for the chargers and stuff like that. But bad example. <laughs> Obviously, we haven't touched it can, since last year. I know you're not going to cut, but you can cut. <laughs> so, uh, I think this one came out of our backup car last year, so we actually had a had our backup car with a harness. But we actually had to use it. We had to use our backup car. And uh, these are really touchy. We have this antenna that goes up on the roof of the car. And then this attaches to your car radio. And then you have this wire that plugs into my helmet microphone. And then there's a box in here that has to be insulated or else you get like static noise. So it gets wrapped with uh, pigment, apparently. <laughs> okay. I think you could use anything. And this plugs into the radio as well. And then this plugs into the harness for your push to talk and I Velcro it and duct tape it to the steering wheel so that I can talk back. So that's what the harness looks like. Usually we have one of these in the car to hold the radio. And I like to attach it somewhere where I can reach the volume knob and adjust that or switch channels if uh, we end up you know, deciding to do that. These end up all over the trailer to charge the car radio and everyone else's radios. The spotter, um, crew members, everyone that wants one. And then I also have uh, for a, this is a specially designed crew member helmet that has the, the push to talk on the helmet. So pretty cool deal from Simpson. Nice looking helmet, comfortable for the guys. And uh, you know, got the button so that we can communicate if there's a problem. Like say we're trying to do more than a planned pit stop and maybe do uh, some repairs or something like that. It comes in handy to have, have communication to know what's going on, what we need to do. So all that for, to try and win Super Dirt Week. <laughs> yeah. And to have all the radios done. And <clears throat> Well, I know you guys use uh, the... Air guns? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, depending on the guys changing the tires, some guys like to use air guns, some don't. So, these can be faster than the electric guns. Uh, they're really loud. Mm -hmm. make a lot of noise but and they and they spin faster than the electric guns but some guys are more comfortable just using the same gun they use every day but other guys practice with these often and they get good with them so we have them in case in case the guys show up that practice with them and know how to do them so, uh, but that requires nitrogen bottles regulators hoses it's quite extensive so um, but it can be the difference between, uh, a few positions on pit road, so. I've always been taught, if I'm welding on, uh, some sort of vehicle to always on, on, the, to disconnect the, the ground on the battery. When I came here and, uh, started helping Mike out, his pet peeve was always on, un on the, the MSC box because uh, we could potentially short out the MSC box and the car will not have ignition when we go to start it for the first time at the racetrack, which by then it's too late and you're scrambling and you're trying to get the car out the hot laps because you don't know what the car is going to be like. And instead of focusing on the setup of the race car, you're now focusing on where the hell the MSD box is, the replacement, so the car will run. Did you yeah. get all that? <laughs> so, and these, these MSDs are quick and easy to change because we have the same connectors on all of them. So these are the connectors that come on the dirt spec 
7600 rev chip box that you use on your spec 358 for new york uh dirt car small you probably cover up the 8000 chip then no this is <laughs> so for fulton we're we're not required to run the dirt rev box it's just reckon i don't know it's either recommended or not required whatever so we can run this for fulton and then we have to change it and put the other MS, the spec rev box in to run a Swego because they'll check to make sure that we have it. And we've even had them put it on a machine and RPM it to make sure that it chips before 7600. Yeah, so, it, it, so how does that machine work? Well, I have one here if you'd like to see it. But I don't really know how it works. It just just acts like the engine's RPMing and it goes and then it boop, boop, boop. When, it, when it hits the rev chip, it starts having an intermittent spark. So, I don't really know how to explain that further, but. Uh, anyway, know. we've made all of our big blocks the same plug so that when you can, when you have these races like the Fulton 200 and you're not required to run that box, it easily interchanges. Now, one thing that's important is when you put when you switch these boxes, the timing often is off like two, three degrees. So you need to reset the timing every time you change the box. Because uh, especially if it ended up advanced, you could ruin the engine. Um, or else you lose horsepower if it ends up retarded. So What's the difference between the black box and the red box? Uh, the black box has uh, supposedly higher voltage. It's HVC, high voltage, high voltage current coil, I don't know. So pretty much just so this one spark. this one seems to spark hotter and burn out the plugs more and I have to change the spark plugs more. <laughs> so this motor was originally built to be a uh, New York dirt car spec engine. And then uh, when we started running the Star Trek Super Series stuff, we wanted to have a PA spec so we could be competitive on that circuit. And so we sent it out, had it, uh, this intake installed, which is ported. So this is like, uh, you know, ported down the side here. It has much better flow where this intake for, for New York spec or dirt car spec looks rough like this, even on the inside. So it's, and it says spec right on it. And the heads say spec right on them down in the ports too. So uh, what I had to do right now to get re this ready for Dirt Week is we drained all the water out of it and took this off. Had to pull the distributor out, the, this water neck, the carburetor, everything off and clean everything. And we, I'm, I mean, it's very meticulous trying to keep it clean in there, use the vacuum and everything. And uh, luckily my gaskets didn't get ripped, so I, could, I was just able to just re-silicone the, the surface of the gaskets. And I definitely like to use a lot of silicone uh, near the water ports and along these rails all the way across from this hole to here and in the back too. And uh, just got it really clean with a scotch brite and a razor blade and, and some brake clean and then siliconed it up and put the new intake on. And as I drop it on, I look down in these holes to make sure that the ports are lined up as you tighten the bolts. And I torque the bolts about uh, like 16 to 18 foot pounds to start. And then I let the silicone harden up and then torque them to like 24 foot pounds when I'm all said and done. Uh, that way that silicone is there and then you can kind of crush it and it helps seal it, in my opinion. Um, then let it dry for about 24 hours and install the distributor which you gotta have num number one cylinder up top dead center, line up the number one spark plug wire with the number one cylinder, and the cap lined up with number one cylinder, 
and then that gets you close on your timing until you start it and then install the carburetor the water neck fill it back up with water get it started adjust your timing and you're good to go so this we are running at the 200 and super dirty correct yeah so uh as we explained earlier at the 200 we're going to need the spec intake and headers um but not the the msd box um so we changed the intake for now and the headers and then later on oh we also have to change to the carburetor because so for pa we run a 750 carburetor this is a stock 650 carburetor so we're going to put that on um but then so for dirt week the only thing we'll have to change is the msd box so that is what is happening in the ray shop as we speak, as we prepare for Super Dirt Week, a lot of bits and pieces getting put together. So if you are heading to Super Dirt Week next week, be sure to mark your calendar. Friday evening after the Big Black Modified qualifiers and the heat races, we, as in Mike, myself, the crew, the whole gang, we are all going to be heading down to Lighthouse Lanes. It is right outside, literally right outside the first turn at the racetrack. So we're going to be um, having some specials. We're going to do a meet and greet. I don't want to set a specific time because as you and I both know, racing doesn't really end exactly at like nine o'clock so as soon as the qualifiers are done we pack up we get loaded we're gonna be heading down to lighthouse lanes gonna have some food some drinks bowling gonna hang out with everyone so definitely mark the new calendar set yourself a little reminder i'll make sure to post it also on our facebook pages but we're gonna be hanging down there um they are jumping on board with us for the week of super dirt week so we told them that we'd go hang out at their bowling alley and guys if you're camping it is literally like right there right outside turn one so definitely come hang out with us in the meantime we've got more stuff to do i've got stuff to do but want to hop on and share with you all that's going on up here in e town so hopefully we will see you either at the fulton 200 or we'll see you at super Dirt week see you guys